When you are looking at a distant galaxy through a powerful telescope and you see its stars, its gas, its dust, and maybe even some planets, have you ever wondered how far away it is from you? How fast is it moving away from you? And what does that tell you about the history and fate of the universe? These are some of the questions that astronomers have been trying to answer for decades using a key parameter called the Hubble constant. It is the rate of expansion of the universe, and it determines how old, how big, and how fast the universe is. But there is a problem. Different methods of measuring the Hubble constant give different results, and no one knows why. This is called the Hubble tension, and it is one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology today. In this episode, we will talk about the latest results from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, which confirm the accuracy of the Hubble constant measured from certain types of stars and supernovae, but also deepen the mystery of why it differs from the value predicted from the Big Bang afterglow. We will also discuss what this means for our understanding of the universe and its underlying physics. So what is the Hubble constant, and how do astronomers measure it? The Hubble constant is named after Edwin Hubble, who discovered in 1929 that distant galaxies are moving away from us and that their speed is proportional to their distance. This means that the universe is expanding and that it was smaller and denser in the past. The Hubble constant tells us how fast this expansion is happening, and it can be expressed as kilometers per second per megaparsec, which is a unit of distance equal to about 3.26 million light years. For example, if the Hubble constant is 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec, it means that a galaxy that is one megaparsec away from us is moving away from us at 70 kilometers per second. But how do we know how far away a galaxy is? This is where things get tricky. There are two main methods of measuring distances in cosmology. One is based on the cosmic microwave background, CMB, which is the relic radiation from the Big Bang, and the other is based on the cosmic distance ladder, which is a series of steps that use different types of objects as standard candles or rulers. A standard candle is an object that has a known brightness, so we can infer its distance by comparing its apparent brightness with its intrinsic brightness. On the other hand, a standard ruler is an object that has a known size, so we can infer its distance by comparing its apparent size with its intrinsic size. The CMB method uses the fluctuations in the temperature and polarization of the CMB as standard rulers, and it gives us a value of the Hubble constant of about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. The cosmic distance ladder method uses different types of standard candles, such as Cepheid variables, which are pulsating stars that have a relationship between their brightness and their period of pulsation, and type 1, A supernova, which are exploding stars that have a uniform brightness at their peak. The cosmic distance ladder method gives us a value of the Hubble constant of about 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec. These two values are not compatible with each other within their uncertainties, and this difference is statistically significant. This means that either one or both of these methods are wrong, or that there is something missing in our model of the universe. But what could be causing this discrepancy between the CMB method and the cosmic distance ladder method. There are several possible explanations, but none of them are very satisfying. One possibility is that there are systematic errors in one or both of these methods, such as calibration errors, selection biases, or environmental effects. For example, maybe we are not accounting for all the factors that affect the brightness or the size of our standard candles or rulers, such as dust extinction, metallicity, or gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is when light from a distant object is bent by the gravity of an intervening object, making it appear brighter or larger than it really is. Another possibility is that there are unknown sources of gravitational lensing that affect our measurements of distances. For example, maybe there are clumps of dark matter or black holes along our line of sight that distort our view of distant galaxies. Dark matter is a mysterious form of matter that does not interact with light or ordinary matter, but only with gravity. Black holes are regions of space where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape from them, not even light. A third possibility is that there is new physics beyond our standard model of cosmology, which assumes that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic, 
meaning that it looks the same in all directions and at all locations, and that it is governed by general relativity, dark matter, and dark energy. Dark energy is a mysterious form of energy that causes the acceleration of the expansion of the universe. Maybe there is something wrong with one or more of these assumptions, and maybe we need to modify our theories of gravity, dark matter, or dark energy to explain the Hubble tension. So how can we test these possibilities and resolve the Hubble tension? This is where the James Webb Space Telescope comes in, the most powerful and complex space telescope ever built. One of the main objectives of James Webb is to measure the Hubble constant with unprecedented precision and accuracy using the cosmic distance ladder method. Webb can observe Cepheid variables and Type 1a supernova in galaxies that are much farther away than those observed by Hubble and other telescopes, and it can also use other types of standard candles, such as red giant stars and masers, which are natural sources of microwave radiation. By using multiple types of standard candles, James Webb can cross-check and calibrate its measurements and reduce the systematic errors and uncertainties. The latest results from Webb confirm the accuracy of the Hubble constant measured from Cepheid variables and Type 1a supernova, and they agree with the previous measurements from Hubble and other telescopes. This means that the cosmic distance ladder method is robust and reliable, and that there is no evidence of unknown sources of gravitational lensing affecting our measurements. However, this also means that the Hubble tension persists and that there is still a discrepancy between the CMB method and the cosmic distance ladder method. So what does this mean for our understanding of the universe and its underlying physics? It means that we are facing a major challenge and an exciting opportunity. We are either missing something in our observations or in our theories, or both. We need to find out what is causing this discrepancy and what it implies for our model of the universe. Is there something wrong with our standard candles or rulers? Is there something wrong with our theory of gravity or dark matter or dark energy? Or is there something else that we have not considered yet? The Hubble tension is one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology today, and it could lead to a breakthrough in our knowledge of the cosmos. James Webb is a revolutionary telescope that will help us solve this mystery, as well as many others. It will also explore many other aspects of the universe, such as the formation of galaxies, stars and planets, the detection of exoplanets, the probing of dark matter and dark energy, and the search for astrobiology. It will transform our view of the universe and reveal new wonders and surprises. Thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, subscribe, and comment below. If you have any questions or feedback, please let us know. We hope to see you again soon.